What up, what up, world? This is Decent once again with another Pop Dust exclusive, and my guest at this time is a living legend, most noted for his contribution to the legendary group Earth, Wind & Fire, along with a multitude of solo albums. We're here to talk about his latest project, Love Will Find A Way. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Philip Bailey. Mr. What Bailey. Up, what up? <laughs> Mr. Ba- <laughs> Mr. Bailey, how you doing today? Doing great, man. How you doing? I'm doing amazing. Once again, it's a, always a great time here at Pop Dust when we get to sit down with a legend and an architect of great music such as yourself. So thank you for taking time out to speak to us today. Oh, thank you for having me. So you released your project, Love Will Find A Way, back in June of this year. And me being somebody that has always grown up, you know, amongst, you know, you, yourself, you know, both as a member of Earth, Wind & Fire and, you know, a lot of your own solo music, this has got to be probably one of the best projects, you know, not just from you yourself, but in general that I've probably heard this year. Definitely, oh, man. <laughs> you definitely, oh, wow. you, you definitely managed to, you know, take, you know, all these different genres of music that you've been associated with, different genres of music that, you know, you're most noted for being able to cover and really be able to bring them into a 2019 sort of space. The album itself, from what I understand, took about two years to create. And you, who've been making music for such a long time, do you find that making music now in 2019 is a whole lot easier versus, you know, the time when you and Earth, Wind & Fire got started? Yeah, it is. It, it, it is. I, I, and music that were easier, it is easier. It really is. I mean, not only does technology bring so much into you being able to uh, do things so quickly. For instance, I just give you a real for instance. Okay, so I'm talking to said Robert Glasper, and I, you know, I was on to work on the project on certain songs, and you know, I had given him the song. He shows back an MP3 on my phone, and yeah. I go online and go to to Curtis Mayfield's original Billy Jack, you know, to explore that. You know, he, you know, when we go in the studio, we're already halfway there. We know what we're going to do. We've already decided. Back in the day, you know, we would be in a studio for days, perhaps, working on getting to that point. Yeah, it's a lot easier and and uh, the fact that I don't have to sing all them choruses <laughs> <laughs> that I had to sing every every chorus for you know ten plus years in Earth Wind and Fire every single chorus and doubling every single part you know because it was only me and Maurice doing all those vocals for Earth Wind and Fire you know. It's like yeah, it's a whole lot. <laughs> you can fly that vocal to that chorus. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I I could definitely fly, fly that vocal. <laughs> Let's fly. <laughs> yeah, I definitely could see that being you know less of a chore for somebody with you know an extensive range you know vocally as yourself, and it can be a little bit tiring you know doing multiple takes. So I'm glad that you know in this climate it can preserve you know your output with you being able to do things a whole lot easier. But you mentioned Robert Glasper who contributed to the project. There's also some other names, you know, some well-noted, you know, very respected musicians that contributed to the process of this album. Um, Will I Am being an individual, um, Kamasi Washington, another one of my favorite jazz musicians. Do you feel like, you know, with your legacy, artists who are, you know, who were influenced by you, who came up, you know, underneath you, can be a little bit intimidated you know, working with you, because I'm pretty sure you have high standards being, you know, the accomplished musician that you are. Do you feel like they kind of walk into the situation a little bit tepid and timid knowing that they're working with Philip Bailey? Well, you know, the beautiful thing about music, man, is after you talk about, after you give each other your accolades or whatever, music is the, is the, is the common denominator. You know, it's like when you start making music, Music is the one that rules. It's the one that tells you, you know, like, is this right? Is it right? Is it wrong? Is it too much? Is it not enough? 
you know, so man, at that at the point where we start making music, you know, we were letting music guide us. So we're not we're not fanning out at that point. We're not, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm a, it's down I'm to a, business. I'm, you know, I'm a yeah, I'm a fan of those guys too. You know, but when we start, everybody respects each other's music and stuff, and we're all we're all feeling, you know, appreciative. To, to get in a studio with one another, but when we start making music, and that's the beautiful thing about picking the right people. Now, I don't know if this happens with everybody or whatever, and I have been in the studio where people couldn't get past themselves. You know, that wasn't the case with any of these musicians. You know, we, you know, we were, we were, we were dead set on, okay, where is this taking us? Where do we got to go? You know, with you being you know, in the space where you can, you know, have people give you, you know, your notoriety, give you your respect, you know, give you, you know, your flowers, for lack of a better term, while you're still here. One of the things that I, you know, expand on when I, I, I talk to, you know, legends as yourself is, you know, the meaning of legacy, especially for a black artist. I always feel like when it comes to, you know, specific genres of music and specific of people, we don't covet our legends the same way other genres of music may cover them like the stones will always be the stones no matter if they're performing or not you know so on and so forth do you feel like you know music you know especially amongst black people has come to a point where we're starting to appreciate our legends or do you feel like we still have miles to go in that regard well i think that we do mm -hmm. because if we didn't there wouldn't be a kamazi washington right there wouldn't be a robert glasser there wouldn't be a Christian Scott. There wouldn't be, you know, these great, you know, young musicians, Anderson Pat. Mm -hmm. You know, those guys come from, they come from music that is, was laid down and from musicians who were laid it down before them. And their respect in, in studying the art form and preparing themselves allows them the ability to read re uh invent you know what has gone on before them because nothing's new yep you know re redoing it in a different way right in a sense barring other elements that help shape the sound to begin with yeah you I mean, you're only borrowing you know like you know like just like we learn to walk by mimicking or imitating people that we see right and then you know we may have a bit, little different strut, but basically, basically still, we're still walking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So with this album, you're able to kind of be everywhere, but still in the same place, if that makes sense. Because with jazz, it's open to interpretation musically. It's very, very free form. It's very, very flowing. But I feel like any real musician knows that there's always a concept. There's always an end goal. There's always an end game. Do you feel like it was easier to kind of put this together or was it just you kind of following different sounds that you might have been inspired by chasing that sound and then ultimately coming up with this project? It wasn't easy. Yeah. Nothing good. Nothing good is easy. Amen. <laughs> it was a challenge, um, but it was a well welcomed challenge. You know, when you're working with musicians of that caliber, artists of that caliber, you're already in a rarefied atmosphere and so the expectation is always equal to the standard of the musician that you're working with right at that at that being said though sometimes you can get caught up in in that and don't go that extra mile which is to be very specific about where you want to go have a have a vision and have a direction you know of where you want to go and 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 meet that criteria i think that robert glasper's involvement helped us to kind of focus what lane we wanted to be in kind of follow that that thread throughout the throughout the project we went back and cut other things over and the whole thing to uh make the the whole project uh, congenial make it all work together and you can definitely hear that you know throughout the course of this project because once again even though jazz is sort of more free form this is definitely you know a concise and you know consistent and cohesive body of work so absolutely absolutely so 
in closing, because I know you have a very, very busy schedule, my final question for you would be if you can sum up, you know, your legacy, be it, you know, with Earth, Wind and Fire, be it with, you know, yourself as a solo artist, everything from your foundation to everything that is, you know, Phil Bailey, the man, the musician, what would that boil down to, you know, across across the board for you? I mean, and I'm not trying to be evasive, but first of all, that's not for me to 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 do. It's like for me, it's just it's about keeping my my focus forward and continuing to go forward until you know the creator takes me out of here. Whatever my legacy is. You know, yeah. Um, the one thing I will say, the one thing I will say, though, I I want to do those positive things. I want my legacy to be positive and not negative. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, from where I'm standing, I feel like you know that's already submitted because you've definitely contributed, you know, a great deal to you know musical culture. People like me who have grown up, you know, listening to you, and my parents listen to you, and, you know, grandparents listen to you, so. I feel like with future generations, everything that you're doing, you know, everything that you've done will not be in vain. And we will continue to honor you while you're still here and honor the music, you know, even when you're no longer here, which I hope will be not anywhere close <laughs> in, the, in the near future or distant future. But Mr. Bailey, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to sit down and talk to us. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you once again for everything that you've done for us, you know, as a man and as a musician. Thank you so much, man. Thanks for having me. This has been another pop that's exclusive. I am decent. Once again, Mr. Philip Bailey, make sure you guys get his project. Love will find a way. It is out now on all streaming platforms.